Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to tackle something that I've actually not done before. So this is not so much how and ordinarily how I'd paint things as much as a let's have some fun trying something new things. <laughs> uh, because I've never painted the Amoeba camo before. So I'll include a few notes along the way, um, including links to some of the color swatches that I've used. But this has been a really fun challenge. Now this miniature here, she comes from the Bad Squiddo range, which as I mentioned later, I'll link to in the description. And there is a Kickstarter going as well to increase the size of the range with a whole run of winter themed miniatures wearing Ushankas and great coats, which are looking really great. So I'll make sure that those are in the description too. This miniature actually came to me as a very kind surprise from somebody. Um, I don't know who. It just arrived one day. Uh, Annie at Bad Squiddo. She had my address from a previous order and has conspired with somebody to get me painting one of these Soviet scouts. So I figured today was finally the day, and I really enjoyed doing this. This one actually goes through a few different manufacturers as far as paints go, so it's a little haphazard, but I hope you'll follow along. Remember that you don't have to match anything perfectly, I just use what I have to hand. All of the paints will be listed in the description though, so without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now to start with, I've primed her with a spray of Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter. But there's honestly no reason you couldn't use White or Wraith Bone or something from Citadel. There's not really a correct answer here, just something nice and bright, which is going to slightly show through some of our layers, is going to help quite a bit. Now to start off with, we're going to paint her jacket, or the, the Amoeba suit. And the correct green for this is a subject of uh, some interpretation. So I'm using here, this is Army Green from the Army Painter, and I've added in just a little bit of water, and you'll see this flows quite easily off my brush, but I am getting a little bit of the uh, primer showing through, but that's not a problem. All I want to do is cover this over once, and then we'll come back and give this a second coat. Now other colors you could use, um, I was having a look-see at some color conversion charts. Apparently Luftwaffe Camo Green is a, uh, a close one for this. I also quite look like the look of Strachan Green from uh, Citadel if you want to stick to that, but Army Green seems to have just that right mix of sort of slightly saturated gray green. So two coats of this, once this one's dried, I think we'll be away laughing. Now just for comparison's sake, here is one coat, and you'll see that there is a little bit of patchiness where that uh, primer is still showing through. Now it's important you leave this coat for about five minutes to dry thoroughly, because if I apply wet paint over the top of this, what's going to happen is it's going to filter through and lift the bottom coat off. So you'll see straight away, applying the second coat over the thoroughly dry first coat, you get a much more even coverage, and none of that primer showing through. So when I talk about doing two coats for some of these colors, this is what I mean and the reason why. Now we're not gonna move straight on to applying the spots. We're actually gonna go and paint in her skin now. So for this I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone. And as I always point out, there's no right way to paint skin. Uh, from one video to the next, I'll often do it differently. So don't pay attention to me, do this however you like it. <laughs> Because I want to be able to use an all-over shade, uh, Cadian Flesh Tone is quite a nice mid-tone for what I've got in mind. And you'll find it covers fairly well over this nice bright primer, but in some areas you are going to need to come back and give it a second coat. Now at last we can move on and we'll start applying the camo patterns. Now for this I'm using Leather Brown from the Army Painter, uh, but you could use pretty much any brown colour for this. Uh, there are some really good swatches on artisan designs, uh, which I will link to in the description so you can see that. Now the amoeba pattern has this weird, it looks like a splat on like a cartoon from, <laughs> from the 90s. So I am going to draw a little line. Don't worry too, you know, too much about how thick it is. But I'm just going to draw sort of a vague S shape. And then out to the sides, let's do a little... Blobby Blob. Blob. Oh god, Mr. Blobby. Does any of you remember Mr. Blobby? That was a terrible bloody thing. Anyway, getting off topic. Yeah. So what you want to do is to create a sort of splotted, like a, 
yeah, like a cartoon splat. So up on her other arm here, it's starting up against her collar. Draw that little line. Uh, sort of a vague S shape will often help you to get a, a random pattern on the clothing. And then off from the sides of that, let's just go. It would help if I show you that actually. Little blob up to the side, little blob down the bottom, and create these random shapes. Now you can follow the color swatches, um, or if you're having trouble deciding where to put these, just take a look at the uh, painted version on the website. Now this can take a little bit of practice because you don't want to 100% recreate what the swatch is doing. Um, if you just recreate camouflage on a miniature, it's going to work. <laughs> and what happens then is the sort of edges and everything start to blur. It becomes difficult to see detail on your miniature. So we're going for impressionist here. What's important really is that you're getting these sort of splattery blobs at the edges of your camo, uh, which helps sell the sort of amoeba look. But I'm quite pleased with that. The brown isn't quite as light as it's going to be when we're finished, but for now that'll do. What we'll move on to is painting her hair. And for this, I've got German Camo Black Brown. Uh, there isn't a correct color to this. It's whatever color you want to paint her hair. Uh, but I am doing this now because if I make a mistake and sort of hit her cap, uh, we're going to paint that cap in a second anyway. And now moving up to that cap, uh, we'll paint her color in the same color. I'm going to use khaki gray. This is a Vallejo paint. Uh, Russian uniform, my goodness, you'll start arguments about what color this should be. <laughs> uh, but as well as green variations, there were the sort of khaki, just off green touch to them. Uh, so there's not really a correct color here, but a lot of guides and color swatches will suggest khaki gray as being a pretty good spot. Um, Zandri Dust, if you've only got uh, Vallejo stuff, that's quite a good replacement for that too. Yeah, let's just give this a couple of coats and do her collar as well. Now that's most of the work on a uniform done. All we really need to do now is those last few little details. So I've got here German Camo Beige, and I'm going to paint in her weapon strap with this. Any khaki color will do here. I mean, literally, you could use khaki. Then we'll use mahogany brown to paint in her leather belt. Beige brown then to do the wood on her rifle. Uh, although any color that you like for wood here will work perfectly well. And as always, I suggest just go straight over the top of the sort of black stuff that you're going to have to paint later. Now any black parts of her rifle uh, and her boots as well. I'm using just flat black for this. Although for her boots in particular, you might like using, ironically, German grey, which is just off of black, and can work quite well if you want to do sort of a, what's the word, a leather black. And finally, get a nice tip on your brush, and a little bit of flat red, and let's paint in this star on her cap. Now if I make any mistakes here, I can go back to my khaki grey and touch it up. Now my palette's starting to look a little crowded, <laughs> so I'm going to use here Strong Tone in one, two, three drops of that, and some of the Quick Shade Mixing Medium, one, two, and three drops of that as well. So half and half mix here. Now once that's mixed on your palette, you're going to have a cloudy grey mess, but we're going to apply this over the whole miniature making sure to work it into any recesses with our brush. If you get any big gloopy spots like that on her face, while it's still wet, you can just move it around. So I am going to cover the whole miniature in this mix, and then we'll leave her for about well, half an hour to dry. See what we get once that's finished. And then after that drying time, this is what you'll have. You'll see that darkens her down quite a bit, it gives her plenty of shading, and you could go ahead and pop her on the table quite happily like that, I think. But why stop there? So I've got a little Nurgling Green, and you'll notice I'm just jumping all over suppliers and manufacturers today, but I know, you know, there's a lot of reasons to have different paint suppliers in your collection. What I'm going to do is I have watered this down about half and half water to Nurgling Green, because this is going to be quite sharp when it goes on. But as it dries, 
that'll look much more reasonable. So I'm going to go around with a little ditty brush, just take my time and highlight the green areas. Now you can be as sparing or as sort of bold as you like with this. Um, under her leg here is probably a good idea because you get quite a nice sharp crease on the trousers. But anywhere you like the look of a much brighter edge <laughs> to draw your eye. Sorry, that thing again where I'm concentrating and I'm whispering. Uh, but I reckon because we're painting a figure for the table, slightly sharper highlights are going to work well because we need to be able to see them at table distance. Now, if you make any mistakes, you can go back to your army green and basically paint back over them. You know, if I put too much uh, Nurgling green on, I can go back to my base coat and tidy up if I have to. And once you've got that green jumpsuit looking the way you'd like, uh, it's time to move on to the camo stuff. Now, I'm going to paint this slightly differently to how I highlighted the jacket, so the, the cover rolls, because those, what I've highlighted is the edges, whereas with the camo pattern, in order to make this really stand out, I'm going to paint over most of it again in monster brown, and then leave just the recesses, so darker areas on the model. Let's get her in focus there. We will leave those the darker brown. So towards the edges of areas, leave a little brown sort of edge. Again, this is a slightly time consuming process, but it's going to look real cool when we're done. So with these blotches, if I can get her under there like that, leave a little brown mark towards the edge. And anywhere that the brown sort of folds into a crease, we won't paint into there too. Now by highlighting the jumpsuit in two different ways, I think what happens is you accentuate the camo pattern without losing any of the detail. It's not the most time efficient way of doing it, but it looks pretty cool, I think, and it's not too difficult to recreate. What I'm going to do now is I have here, this is German Camo Orange Ochre, which is a mouthful, and we're going to highlight her uh, collar and her hat with this. Don't need to do very much of this, just a sort of a thin line near the top, and same too on her collar. Now in order to highlight her skin, I'm actually going to go back to Cadian Flesh Tone, and I'm going to paint in most of the areas of her hands and face with a quick layer of this, but leaving the recesses in that shaded color. Now, this is one that'll take a little bit of practice, but I quite like painting faces. Uh, much easier to do when there isn't a camera sitting in front of you, so I'm going to do most of this off screen. Then switch on down to a smaller brush and a little bit of kids left flesh. And what I'm going to do is highlight the very backs of her knuckles. So along here like this, just dip, dip, dip. And we'll do a little line down the center of her nose, across her brows, and we'll do her cheekbones in this too. Now we'll spin her around, and I've got some fresh leather brown. What I'm going to do is just paint some little lines on the edges of her hair to sort of accentuate the shape of her haircut. Don't think you need to do very much of this, to be honest. And now to finish her off, what I've got is a little bit of Iron Warriors, uh, but any sort of gunmetal color will work for this. I'm just going to lightly pick out some of the edges of her rifle, and then she's pretty much done. So once I've finished this off, what I'm going to do is go ahead, hit her with a matte varnish. Uh, as I'm always pointing out, I'm quite fond of Vallejo's matte spray varnish, if you want to you know, compare against what I'm using. And we'll pop a quick base on her and see what she looks like when she's all finished. And with that, our Soviet Scout is complete. And I had a lot of fun actually tackling Amoeba Camo for the first time. The rest of the uniform is fairly simple to do, of course, because all you really need is that khaki grey, or pretty much any beige brown, you know, going for the period. Uh, Soviet uniforms, you've got a lot of leeway with. 
Now, if you like this miniature, it's worth pointing out, of course, you can pick her up directly from Bad Squiddo, uh, which I will link to in the description. And as well, there is the Kickstarter going at the moment for an addition to the range. Uh, so there's a whole slew of winter-themed uh, Soviet women. Uh, those are looking fantastic. Really looking forward to when those come out. So do go check them out. If you think this figure's cool, there's a whole bunch more <laughs> to go and have a look at. So any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. And thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Connor, and Fred. Your support is invaluable, folks. Really mean it. So thank you very much for your time on and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.